Good morning, everybody. So I'm Chris Delvises from Upskill. I'm happy to be here today all the way from Austin, Texas. So today we're gonna to be talking about augmented reality, the Internet of Things, and how they come together to upskill the Industry 4.0 workforce. So when we say Industry 4.0, I know a lot of you are probably familiar with this term, maybe some of you aren't, um, but we're talking about the fourth industrial revolution. So the first industrial revolution was the mechanization of manual processes with steam and water power. Then we had the second industrial revolution, which uh, was assembly lines and electricity. Uh, then the third industrial revolution was computers, IT systems, and automations. And with each of those revolutions, it was new technology that um, brought new productivity gains and allowed people that adopted the technologies to get a competitive advantage. And that's what we're seeing again with the upcoming fourth industrial revolution, which is all about seamlessly connecting all of the equipment and uh, systems across a, um, a, a deployment. And so that's referred to as, as cyber physical systems. So the convergence of cyber systems and physical systems. So that network that connects all of, the, um, all of the equipment is what's referred to as the industrial Internet of Things. Um, so when, when industrial Internet of Things is commonly talked about, it's, um, most of the discussion is around connecting the machines and equipment to advanced computing. Um, the, uh, the machines are equipped with sensors and connectivity producing lots and lots of data. That data is piped over to the advanced computing systems where we could do some, some deep analysis on the data and uncover new insights. So that could be some um, optimizations on assets. It could be predicting failures. Um, but I think one of the things that's often overlooked about the industrial internet of things is the workforce and connecting the workforce. And this, this is what's required to become a truly digital enterprise. It's connecting the, the full asset there. So it's both, it's equipping the workforce with a computing interface and allowing them to connect directly to the machines and equipment for interacting with and controlling machines or step-by-step -step instructions on how to utilize the machines. And also connecting them to the advanced um, computing systems where they can view some of the insights that were computed from all of that data, um, view the, the data within the computing interface, um, receive alerts about certain events. Um, but there's also um, in the opposite direction, there, there's actually data being, that can be collected from the workforce themselves because they're equipped with these computing devices. So we can now uh, monitor the, the work as it's being done and collect data from that and feed it back to the advanced computing systems um, to do optimizations on the tasks and, and work itself. So what is this computing interface for the worker? So it, maybe it's, is it a laptop? Uh, is it a, a tablet? Uh, but if you look at the industrial workforce, the environment looks like this. It's, it's hands-on work. Uh, you may have gloves on, so it's, it's not always intuitive to uh, use a laptop or to hold a tablet or to be able to interface with a tablet with your, if you have gloves on. And so this is where augmented reality comes into play uh, because AR is what will truly unlock the potential of the connected worker because you can see the information within your line of sight and you're able to do work completely hands-free. So what is the, the, the value here of, of the connected worker itself? Well, that's where we talk about upskilling the workforce. It's providing uh, the worker with this computing interface, giving them access to the, the people, the information they need to do their jobs um, more effectively at higher performance. Um, and by doing that, by, by equipping the workers to do their job better, there is a trickle-down effect to the rest of the organization. Um, and so that can mean an increase in productivity, increase in quality, increase in compliance, uh, safety, and utilization as well. And so uh, what I'm gonna talk about today is an example 
where we're seeing this happen today. We're seeing um, IoT, augmented reality, and connected worker, and seeing real business impact. And that's at GE Aviation. Um, so GE is one of our customers. And like most aerospace companies, they lose millions of dollars each year on errors made at um, key points in the assembly and the maintenance process. And so the, the cost could show up in lost predict productivity, uh, delays in testing, delays in delivering to their customers, uh, the man hours just required to troubleshoot. But, but the absolute worst case scenario is when they've actually they've delivered the engine to their customers and uh, you know, that, that's when the repairs increase exponentially. And, and that's when we feel the impact too if we're actually riding on the plane and we see one of these errors. Um, so GE Aviation did a study and um, they, were, they were trying to analyze you know, where, where are these errors coming from. And you know what the, the number one cause of these errors was? Anyone wanna guess? It was human error. <laughs> Um, and so they, uh, one, one example of that is, um, it's a pretty simple example, it's improper uh, torque on a nut. And so what you see in the picture here is a fuel leak caused by a nut um, not being torqued properly. And so these are, these are called B nuts and they're used to create a, a reliable seal in hose and fuel lines, but they only maintain that seal if they're torqued to the, the proper amount. And so you can imagine a worker, if they, um, they're, they're tightening the nut and maybe finger tighten, uh, they get distracted and uh, it, it can cause big problems down the road. And so GE set out and said, okay, how can we reduce some of these human errors? Um, so they said, well, should we get uh, better workers, more, more experienced people? Um, but that's, that's not an option. There's a, there's a shortage in experienced workers in, in the manufacturing sector. And so they said, well, let, let's look at the process and see if we can improve the process. And so this is the environment in which the, the work is done on one of these engines. Um, so you can see the, the worker is at the bottom. There's a cart with a very large uh, paper-based instruction uh, manual. There's tools on the cart and then the platform where they go up to do the work. And so there's, there's a lot of context switching here where you look at the instruction, have to go up on the platform and do the work. Um, and even if the, the, the instructions were on the platform, there's still you know, a back and forth between the manual itself. And so what we worked with uh, GE to do is to say, okay, can we replace this paper-based instructions with, with smart classes. And the goal here was to reduce these errors to, to zero and enhance the quality of work that's being done. So the, the solution we worked with GE on, so we used Glass Enterprise Edition. Uh, we used the Upscale Skylight platform, which ran on the glass and provided the step-by-step -step instructions for the, the maintenance procedures. And we also integrated it with a smart uh, torque wrench from Atlas Copco. And so this torque wrench has built-in sensing capabilities so it can detect the amount of torque applied in real time as well as wireless connectivity that we integrated with, with Skylight. So the, the worker, as they're working, this is what they experience. They're, they're wearing the glasses. Um, they see the step-by-step -step instructions um, within their, their line of sight. They can either use touch controls on the glasses to, to navigate through the steps or also use voice commands. Um, the, the steps are enriched with uh, media, so photos and videos to assist in, in performing the step. And if they run into an issue at any time, they can um, call in a, an expert to, to do the see what I see video streaming. And now when they come to a, a, a step where they're, it's time to apply the, uh, the nuts and, and torque, um, they get to a, a screen that looks like this. The instruction is torque the nut. You can see we provide the, the range uh, that the torque is supposed to be within between 51 and 55 inches per pound. And then below that we show a real time reading of the 
actual torque being applied on the wrench, as well as we give the user validation uh, with the, the green color there that the torque is, the, uh, is, is, is validated and is within the range. So it would show red if it's below the range, and then when it comes into range, it, it shows green. So this procedure here allowed them to completely reduce errors um, on, on applying the, the torque here. Um, so the, the results at the, the end of this study, um, quality was able to reach 100%, so zero errors. Um, and 100% compliance. Um, I forgot to mention, um, in addition to uh, showing the, the torque value in real time, uh, we also automatically log the, the value to the, the maintenance record. So uh, the, the compliance here it happens automatically. The, the value that's applied um, is, is logged to the, the maintenance system. There was one additional benefit that we that was unexpected beyond the initial goals of this pilot and uh, that was that we also saw a significant increase in productivity. So there was um, across the, an average across all the workers was approximately eight to 12 percent increase in the time that it took to do that job. And so I've got a, a quick video here that shows the, the procedure being done. It's, it's sped up a little bit. On the left hand side, you'll see the, the status quo with a paper manual. On the right hand side, you'll see the work being done with glass and skylight. Um, it's the same worker. Um, we did the, the baseline first and then with the glass second. Um, and you can notice how many additional times the worker is having to go up and down the, the platform. And so for, for this worker, this was a more junior uh, mechanic and he was actually able to uh, do the job 33% faster using uh, the smart glasses. And so to, to give you a, a big picture understanding of what a few percent increase in efficiency can mean, so GE Digital has, uh, has made this statement that a 1% improvement in aircraft maintenance efficiency can reduce costs by $250 million annually. So you can start to do the math at across a large scale of this organization, this, this type of um, improvements can have a, a massive impact. So we also did a, a survey at the end of the study. 85% um, of the manic mechanics said, I believe that the, using this system will reduce manufacturing errors. I felt confident using this system. And I would wear this even when nobody else is in order to make my job easier. So I think that this, is, this is really powerful. The, the mechanics are accepting the technology and they believe that it can help them do their job better and easier. And so, uh, you know, when we say upskilling the, the workforce, you know, I think the workers are accepting that they want it uh, to help them do their job better. So in, in closing, to, to answer kind of the question of this talk, you know, what, what role does augmented reality play in IoT? Um, I think if you think about it and what we've shown in this case study, the Internet of Things is producing information. Augmented reality is what turns that information into action. And that action is what drives the business results, the productivity, the quality, the compliance, safety, and utilization. So my, my message to you today is if, if you are an enterprise that is considering this technology, it's start now. Uh, Ad adopt it today. The, the bigger risk is, the biggest risk is not the technology itself, it's you not adopting it and your comp I can guarantee your competitors are and you falling behind. Um, so it, at this point, um, if, if you want to learn more about Skylight, you know, we have a booth, um, you can also visit the website upskill.io slash Skylight. And um, at this point, if you want to put some questions into to Slido, I'm, I'm happy to answer a few.